Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Sing your love. Your love is lighting up the darkness. Fear is scattered and my worry quits. Your strength is rising in my weakness. How could I deserve a love like this? You're breathing life into my battles. You speak your purpose in the panic ends. Your glory shining like the morning. How could I deserve a love like this? I'm trusting. I'm trusting you. I'm laying down the lights. Open up my eyes. Letting you change everything. When I give up, you give me life unknown. Now I'm not my own. Letting you change everything. My heart has become your throne. Come on. Almighty, nothing comes close. My soul is safe within my Savior. There's no other love that's greater. My heart has become your throne. Almighty, nothing comes close. My soul is safe within my Savior. There's no other love that's greater. Your love is greater 
Hey everyone, welcome to Karakonites Online. It's good to be with you and thank you for joining us wherever you are, uh, whether you're joining us from your gym, from your car, by the beach or at home. Uh, welcome. You know, this year is just flying along, isn't it? Like it's almost the end of January. Before you know it, you blink and it's in February. You know, 2022 has gotten off to a rapid start for me. What about you? I must say that I've been enjoying watching and seeing lots of photos in your stories and uh, Facebook posts of, you know, just you having a great time, having a good holiday with those that you love uh, and just having a rest and well done to you because that's very, very important and it sets you up well for the rest of this year. And so we are in our second week of the Abide series, which is actually a sermon series that leads us in New Zealand into our time of prayer and fasting that kicks us off for the year, gets us in a spiritual position of health as we get into 2022. Uh, and so today's sermon is called The Word Sets Us Free. So let me pray as we get into this and we'll get right into the Word of God. Father God, we thank you so much for the written and inspired, inerrant Word of God. We Thank you that when you left this earth, you left us the written word of God, where the, uh, uh, almost like an instruction manual for life, that uh, we can learn about it, we, that we can read about it. But sometimes it is difficult to read and understand the full uh, uh, context and the content of the word. And I give thanks to you, God, that we have our church family, that we can learn together in community. I thank you for connect groups where we can come together and discuss the Word of God. And even tonight, as I share the Word of God, I pray that the Word will not uh, stop in their hearts after the, they turn off the, their uh, browser, but indeed it will be something that they will continue to, to, to process, to think about, and to implement into their lives and also to discuss with their friends and family. So God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are the living word of God as well. So we give praise to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, hey, have you ever done an all-nighter? Well, when I was at uni, I used to do a lot of all-nighters. I studied uh, computer science and business degree, and uh, there were a lot of big assignments. I remember I had to write a game, uh, a little game called Pong, and that took hours and thousands of lines of code. And um, I have this personality that uh, if I start something, I have to finish it, you know? I don't know if you're like that, but um, for me, it's almost an obsessive thing where I get into a groove when I have some momentum. I'm so focused and in the zone that I, I just can't stop. So, you know, um, th this has actually progressed over my years as I've matured. I've learned how to tone it down a little bit, but it's in essence, this this thing about me can be a positive thing or it can be a negative thing as well but it grips me i feel that sometimes i'm trapped in this in this personality that i basically don't know how to chill out a little bit you know but uh, the latest thing um just by way of example is uh I've, i'm into speed cubing well my my children are actual speed cubers but for me I'm actually I guess I'm not very speedy so I'll call myself a cuber and um, I've been trying to get uh, better at the three by three cube uh, just the standard cube and I, I must admit to you and confess to you just between you me and the internet that I've done over 23,000 solves over the last couple of years that's crazy right that's an obsession well, what is your obsession? What is the thing that grips you? What is the thing that you feel um, almost held prisoner by? Well, today we're going to uh, look at a passage of the Bible that talks about how the Word of God sets us free. Now, let's set the background here. So, um, Jesus uh, uh, had, had just come into uh, Jerusalem from Galilee and uh, it was during a time of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's kind of like for Chinese, it's, a, it's Chinese New Year. For, for Filipinos, it's, it's, it's the Burmans. It's, it's, it's the, the, the days and weeks leading up to Christmas. There's, there's festivities. There's people from all over that have just come to this place to celebrate. And Jesus, as you would have heard from last week's sermon, uh, that he he, he was 
he was a relative unknown. Nobody really knew who he was. He wasn't a famous rabbi or religious teacher. People knew him. The, the people that knew him knew him more as a carpenter, as a tradie. But he had come into this t- place with with lots of people in a, a, a festive season and started to heal people and started to teach all these new things that people had not heard before. And you have un- to understand that the Jewish people, it's a culture that has gone for uh, over thousands, uh, a couple of thousand years. And over the last few hundred years, uh, they, they've taught about um, the, the, the various re- religious laws that uh, they had to uh, practice as a people, as a culture. And Jesus basically comes and, and, and changes everything almost. So here, he had just taught in the temple and he, uh, during the Feast of te- uh, Tabernacles. And there was a scenario where um, these religious leaders were trying to catch him out. And they brought a woman who was caught in the act of adultery and wanted to ask Jesus what they should do with him, basically to test him. And the law basically says that this, this woman who was caught in the act of adultery will should be uh, stoned. And so they asked Jesus uh, what they should do. And then Jesus didn't even give them the light of day. They didn't, he didn't even give them the opportunity. But of looking at them he was just squatting down on the ground and this 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 image of him just drawing basically almost ignoring them and he said while he was not looking at them he who has no sin cast the first stone and then one by one all these religious leaders that had brought this woman to condemn her left and then as he looked up he looked at the woman and he said does anyone condemn you And she said, no, they are all gone. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What an incredible, incredible scene. Uh, And for the the people, the onlookers, they would have thought, wow, who is this? Why does he teach like that? Why does he teach something so radically different? And so he also uh, spoke and taught about the fact that he is the light of the world. And, And those that are living in darkness, basically he's contrasting himself as the light of the world and everyone else that does not acknowledge him as being in darkness. And these religious leaders, can you imagine how indignant they would have been uh, in thinking, how dare you, who are you, this new person in town claiming to be light and, we, and, and implying that we are the darkness. Uh, and then in, in explaining that, they were, they were challenging him and he was saying that his father, God, testifies to the fact that he is the light and so he's equating himself to be God and here we have the scenario as we pick it up in John chapter 8 just as the people were um, debating with him and questioning who he was and this is what Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 23 reading from my Bible um, here it says in ESV he said to them you are from below and I'm from above You are of this world, and I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I've been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I've heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. As He was saying these things, many believed Him. Wow! Reading on, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are the offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
wow, I want to pick up this, this part of this passage where as he was speaking, as he was establishing his authority, as he was uh, reminding the people of who he is, that he is God, that it says in verse 29 uh, and 30, it says, as he was saying these things, many believed him. You know, amongst the crowd were just everyday Jewish people. They were there in the temple in this festive season. And along with them were these religious leaders that were trying to catch Jesus out. They were jealous of his authority and his popularity. And some amongst them believed him. Why did these people believe him Believe him, and, and the others not? Well, I'm not sure. But I suspect that some of these people, after hearing uh, Jesus establishing who he is, that he is God, maybe some of these people uh, had been hearing from their fathers, their forefathers, and their great-grandfathers about the coming Messiah. Maybe they, they thought, well, could this be the Messiah? Maybe they chose to uh, receive him. Maybe they chose to believe him because there was a possibility that this Jesus was who he said he was. Anyway, here it says in verse 31, it says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, Freedom comes from firstly acknowledging Jesus. See, Jesus said these words that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free to those who had believed. Interesting, isn't it? The sequence of events. And it's not sort of like uh, you will know the truth, the truth sets you free, then you believe. Believing requires a degree of uh, trust. It re de requires a degree of faith that, that maybe uh, the, these people, you have to remember that these people, uh, uh, you know, to, to them, Jesus was a new person. They didn't do a whole theology degree to study uh, about Jesus. Jesus was actually in real time, live, appearing to them for the very first time. So they made a decision to believe, and then Jesus gave them the key to be set free. Perhaps they had the humility to accept that they needed help. Maybe the religious leaders were so self-righteous that they didn't think that they needed the help. See, this word abide is meno in the Greek. And it basically means not to depart, not to leave, to continue to be present, to endure, to hang in there in today's uh, 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 language, to, to hold on, to not give up, to abide in Him. If you abide in me, Jesus says, then you will know the truth. It doesn't say that if you kind of think about me for a second, it, it, that you scroll through your Instagram and social media and look at a couple of words for today, that you will know the truth. It says, abide. What it speaks about is the difficulty and the challenge of knowing God. If someone tells you that knowing God and being a Christian is easy, maybe they're mistaken. Maybe they're thinking of a different faith. You see, Christianity it's a faith and a relationship with God that lasts a lifetime. It shouldn't be as easy as clicking your finger or saying a prayer and then everything would be fine. I love this word abide because it speaks of just perseverance. Isn't it amazing that in um, John chapter 8 verse 33, as we read further, the other ones, you know, the ones that believe and the other ones. Isn't it amazing that these other ones, most likely the religious leaders, they answered him. We are the offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved by anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? So clearly these people were offended at Jesus suggesting that they are enslaved by something. They're offended. They're saying, we are the uh, sons of Abraham. Don't you know? And they're claiming that they've never been enslaved. But in actual fact, in history, over the over thousand year history of, of Jewish, uh, the Jewish people, they've been enslaved in Egypt. 
in by the Philistines, by As the Assyrian Empire, by the Babylonians, and now by the Romans, by all of these people and these crazy, ignorant people, or maybe they were forgetful, choose to say and claim that they had never been enslaved. You know, the question came to my mind the other day as I was reading this passage. How can you or how do you experience freedom if you don't realize that you are in bondage? You know, or maybe you don't acknowledge that you need help. Or maybe you don't think that whatever is gripping you can be negative and can be the thing that enslaves you and keeps you from true freedom. You know, freedom is a choice. Abiding in God is a choice. What is enslaving you? Maybe you don't know about what is enslaving you. Could money and success and career enslave you? Could pleasing people, uh, your family and your friends? Uh, I, I'm a man pleaser by, <laughs> from way back. Uh, I, I, I don't know where I picked this up from, but I, I have this desire for people to be pleased with me. And it grips me. And I think I've had some freedom over it, but it's an ongoing thing that I have to work on. You know, maybe your need to be in control is enslaving you. Maybe uh, the house that you're saving up for, maybe the wedding that you're planning, maybe the Bitcoin that you're investing in, maybe the religion that you think that you're subscribing to, maybe drugs and alcohol, maybe pornography and lust. As you can see, not everything that I've just mentioned is necessarily negative or bad. But it can become bad and negative because if it becomes an idol, when it, be it becomes something that enslaves you, and worse still, that you are not aware that it's actually enslaving you. You might be wondering, Weeyong, how do I know if something's actually enslaving me and keeping me from God? Well, if it actually distracts you so much that you can't spend time with God once a day, I'm not trying to be religious and condemning, but, and this happens to me too, because I am enslaved by things as well. If something keeps you away from spending the bare minimum with God and having a joy uh, in your relationship with God and having uh, the, 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 just looking forward to your time of prayer with God, then whatever that is that's keeping you away from God, that is enslaving you. So, I want to bring us all right back before I land this plane to a passage in the book of Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 20 onwards, and it says this, For when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us be enslaved to God. Let us give up our slavery to all of these things, these other things that keep us from God, and let us submit ourselves to God instead. As I close, let me just say this, that true freedom comes from acknowledging who Jesus is and abiding and submitting to Him. Let us pray. I want to pray for two groups of people as I end. The first group of people is uh, other Christians, the ones who are believers, my brothers and sisters in Christ. If you, like me, uh, struggle sometimes, or many times, with just my faith with God, that you feel that you're, 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 the curve of your faith with God is like a roller coaster. It goes hot and it goes cold. Uh, you, you find that life just happens and things keep you busy and away from God and distracted. You struggle to read God's word. You struggle to pray. You struggle to worship. If that's you, I want to pray with you and for you. Would you gently put your hand on your heart to indicate that you need that help, that that is gripping you 
Father, you see these hands, including mine. That we are coming to you and saying to you, God, we want to submit ourselves as slaves to you, to you, that you will become our master, that we will indeed be slaves of righteousness, that we will be more gripped by you, more compelled by uh, our desire to spend time with you, to hear from you, to speak with you, than all these other things that may not be necessarily bad in themselves. Dear God, I pray that as we start 2022, that we will be gripped by you, that we will go deeper in our relationship with you. Help us, O God, and we admit, like those ones who believed when Jesus was speaking to them in the temple, we admit that we need your help. We will receive the truth, and we acknowledge that the truth will set us free in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're listening to this and you're not a Christian or perhaps you once walked with Jesus and for some reason you've walked away, you've denied Him. But something today has made you realize that you need to come back to Him. That there are so many things in your life that grips you, that you are enslaved to and you're sick and tired of it. You're sick and tired of uh, these things uh, going well for a while and, and then you get tired of it. You, you, get, you feel so powerless against it. And you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to come close to God. Then you know that giving your life to God or becoming a slave to righteousness or to God is what is going to help you uh, enjoy and live the rest of your life in an amazing way. You want to come close to God. I want to pray for you. Why don't you put your hand on your heart if that's you coming to God. Dear God, you see these hands. These people are saying to you that they are coming to you. They want to come back to you. That they acknowledge that life itself is so empty. They're tired of being enslaved to things that may seem good, but they are empty promises. They don't, don't give them what they, they, they want. They don't, it doesn't give them joy. They're coming to you and asking you and admitting that they are sinners, that they're broken. Why don't you pray this with me? Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I confess my sins. I repent, which means I choose to turn away from my sins. And I receive your forgiveness. I receive the free gift of salvation that you purchased on the cross for me. And I consider you and call you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You see, if you prayed that prayer, it is the most important thing and the most incredible thing you could have done with your life. If that is you, that you prayed that prayer, why don't you send us a message to let us know uh, that you've done that and we'd love to be able to get back to you and to connect with you and teach you and help you follow God for the rest of your lives. If you'd rather tell a friend who's a Christian, why don't you do that? They would be more than happy to lead and guide you as to what the next step is in following God. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for uh, listening to the Word of God and I hope that this Word has encouraged you, that something has gripped you and that there's something that you can do this week to submit more to God and to experience that freedom. I'm going to leave you with a few questions to have a think about and if you're with your Connect groups, why don't you discuss that with your Connect groups? God bless, and we'll see you again. Come on, let's put our hands together tonight. Sing your love. Your love is lighting up the darkness. Fear is scattered and my worry quits. Your strength is rising in my weakness. How could I deserve a love like this? Life into my battles You speak your purpose in the panic ends. Your glory shining like the morning How could I deserve a love like this? I'm trusting I'm trusting you I'm laying down the lights Open up my eyes Letting you change everything When I give up you give me life unknown Now I'm not my own Letting you Everything My heart has become your throne Come on 
Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is safe within my Savior There's no other love that's greater My heart has become your throne Almighty, nothing comes close My soul is safe within my Savior There's no other love that's greater Greater. My heart has become your 